everybody, this is Doll Dazzler and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with you guys a mural that I'm painting in my kitchen. Uh, there's a little smaller space off to the side of my kitchen. It's like a little nook uh, kitchenette area. And my husband and I um, have wanted to decor this space out with some Asian shelves and um, I do have an Asian, a vintage Asian doll that I'm also going to be hanging in here. And we're going to kind of make it like a breakfast coffee area um, uh, decored out with some Asian um, items. And um, we thought it'd be kind of cool to have a mural also in this area. This wall that I'm, I'm putting it on is actually, it's a perfect wall for this for this type of mural that's a perfect size for it so um, it should look really neat once um, this space is uh, completed so I thought that I would um, start the mural first before I did the video so I can explain some of the things that I've done instead of trying to walk you through as I'm painting it um, I find that um, murals are so large on walls that um, I would probably be in the eye of the camera so I thought that I would do a little bit of this and then um, kind of go back and explain to you guys in a video um, the things that I have done. And then it also uh, makes the video a little bit shorter because while I'm painting it's, it's very time consuming even though there could be a time lapse um, on the video. Um, they're still awfully long because of some of the details that I put in um, on the painting. So um, just to explain uh, what I've done so far. Um, I picked out a picture that I liked and dressed it up the way that I wanted it to be. And then I transferred it onto a, um, it's like a, kind of like a page protector type of paper. Um, so it's like a clear plastic. And then I stuck it on my projector and I projected the picture onto the wall. And I started with the circle and uh, painted the circle and then also uh, shaded in all of the colors. And then I came back and put that picture back on the projector and then drew out the geisha girl where I wanted her um, to be on the wall and also the fan. So then I started painting um, out all the details of, of her face and, and of her head and everything. And then I did come back and start then with the fan. And so what I had to do with that is the fan has... Um, some shading all on its own separate from the other part of the mural so what I had to do was paint that and then um, go back again and project them back onto the wall um, but because I didn't have to worry a whole lot about perspective I could hand paint or hand um, hand draw those in pretty pretty easily the rest of the um, the rest of the mural I did have to project and there's those artists out there that I have high respect for and I give them many props for being able to just go up to a wall and start drawing but um, I have to be um, I have to actually have the picture there so that I get the perspective right especially when I'm um, drawing people so um, so I was able to do a little bit of the free drawing um, for the um, samurais um, on the fan um, just because they're a little bit smaller so um, I did get those drawn in and I started painting the first one um, on the fan I completed her headpiece um, and it's dry and it's uh, actually ready for me to start adding some flowers on there and um, and also the um, the uh, cherry blossoms are completed and uh, so I'll be adding in um, her hair picks and some other the decor um, in her headpiece that match the um, the uh, top part there that's red. And so her face is is complete. I might add a couple little things, but I'm pretty happy with the way that her shading turned out on her face. I used um, whites and grays and a little bit of pink. Um, I'll be talking about the mediums that I used for this mural. I didn't just use paint, I used some other things as well. And so I'll be talking about what I used to create this um, mural um, I, in the final video. I'll go over all the things that I had utilized. Um, down here I'll be working on these probably next week, uh, the Samurais. 
And the little suns behind there, I'm gonna to try to make them look as much like her, um, her headpiece as possible, her little um, red uh, headdress area. I'm gonna to try to get the shading um, kind of the same um, for the little suns behind them. And then I'm also going to uh, do her kimono kind of with that same uh, red effect because most of the decor that we're going to be using in this space is going to be um, that kind of uh, brick red color. It's, I guess it's a little bit, it's darker red um, color, so a lot of our decor is going to be, is going to be that color. So then after I get all of that painting done, um, I'm going to seal this mural um, with a clear coat. And uh, what that does is that helps protect the painting. If there's ever anything that gets on the wall, um, I'll be able to wash it off. And then also too, it's gonna help blend in all of these colors together and make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, take out some of the brush strokes and it'll make it look a little bit uh, more smoother and natural. Uh, the main reason is, is to definitely to protect the picture from um, you know, uh, being scratched or um, some of it being uh, scuffed off the wall. So uh, a, a top coat is really, really important. So then after that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add in uh, some uh, three-dimensional artwork. And um, in my mural uh, that I had in my uh, house in Colorado, I had made some dimensional uh, flowers and butterflies for my mural um, out of joint compound. And so I'll be doing that same kind of uh, an idea on this mural. I kind of want to put some um, uh, more three-dimensional um, cherry blossoms near the tree and maybe have some of them falling down. Um, uh, that's really a cool effect. I use uh, the joint compound and even though it's a little bit uh, fragile, once it's sealed, um, it actually makes it a lot stronger and it actually adhere adheres to the wall really easy because it, that product is meant to be put on the wall. And so it, it lasted really well on that mural in Colorado and uh, as long as I, I was there. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna add some little things. Um, I had thought about maybe, uh, maybe a dragonfly or a butterfly or a bird of some kind, um, maybe something even on the fan. So I'm gonna add the three dimensional and then I will seal it um, all together again. And then I will uh, do the updated video so you guys can see how it turned out. I'll be doing probably maybe two videos in between that time. One, once I finish her headdress piece and all those decorative pieces and the samurais, and then I'll do another one after I've sealed just the picture um, without doing the three-dimensional art. And then I'll, I'll do the completed video. But we'll see. Um, uh, maybe I might do some more videos, but um, I'll, I'll see how it goes. And um, I'll see how quickly I can get uh, the mural done. It does take uh, quite a bit of time to do one of these murals. But um, you want to take your time because it's, it's on your wall and you see it every day. So... Um, you do want to take your time when it comes to doing something um, that is going to be a permanent something on the wall. So anyway, if you guys like this mural, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.